Hey everyone, so in this video I'd like to go over generators, specifically how do we use generators in the CLI to scaffold serverless functions as well as projects. Let's jump right into it and start playing in our command line interface. So here in the CLI I've already configured it to communicate with the appropriate workspace where I to deploy these functions. However, just to as a quick reminder, you can do that by running 8base config which is then is going to go retrieve all the workspaces that you have available and you can select which one you want to be configured. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is look at scaffolding a new project, but only provisioning it with certain functions. So for example, if I were to run 8 base init and then give it a name like gen demo, right, if I ran this, it would actually give me four functions by default of each type. So it would give me a resolver, a trigger, a web hook, and a task. However, if I wanted to, I could do two cool things. First thing is I could say dash F and then give it a list of different types of functions. So for example, let's say I wanted a resolver called um, hello world, all right? Not that hello world is not used enough, however, we're just gonna use it for now. And I also wanted a, another function, which was gonna be a, let's say a webhook called um, machine callback. Cool, I could just do F, give it that definition. And then the one thing that I'm also gonna specify here is by default, all these functions are gonna be generated in TypeScript. But if I wanted to change my syntax to be JavaScript, I could just do it like that, run the command. And cool, as we can see, it generated a new project for me with the two types of functions that I wanted, as well as it did them in JavaScript instead of TypeScript. So let's open this project now and take a little peek at what was generated for us. So first off, I'm gonna move into the directory called gen demo, and then I'm going to open it in Sublime. So if I do that, and I go in here, we can see that it created directories for me called resolvers and webhooks depending on the function type, which in we have a hello world directory, which has the handler as well as the schema since it's a resolver, and then some mock file in a mox directory. So first off, if we go to our handler, we can see that it's just a simple asynchronous function that we generated, which returns what the resolver received from the data on the, uh, on the argument, event data argument. And if we were to look at our schema, we can see that it created the hello world schema with for both the result type or response type, as well as the function definition, which is a query. And then in the request, it gave us the structure that it expects in production for the arguments or the functions argument, right? So this would be the data that gets sent to the request. What's cool about this is that right now, if we were to take this um, command from the document or from the um, encode documentation, we could actually run and execute this function. So if I run that, it's invoking it and it just invoked it locally. So all of this is set up, ready for you to start developing with. And this is the same for the webhook, which has a handler. Webhooks are, since they're real HTTP calls, they have to have a certain type of response object, which you can read more about in the documentation. And all the definitions for these functions were created in our apace.yaml file. Right, so this generator was used when the project was created. However, for a project that's already been created, how do we use generators to add functions to that project? To start, let's go back to our command line and start writing out the generator command. So let's clear our screen, and I'm just gonna bring this down to the middle of the screen, and so let's run, okay, so 8base, generate, and function, and what we're gonna do, is, or actually not function, excuse me. First, let's look at the types of generators that we have. So if we run help, help, we can see that we have, okay, we can generate a mock, a resolver, a task, trigger, webhook. These are the ones that we're gonna pay attention to right now. So let's see what happens if we wanted to say, okay, well, let's generate a webhook. And pass in help again. So cool, on the webhook, we can specify a few things like the different options it needs what's gonna be the path, what's gonna be the method, as well as do we want to include mocks or not, and as well as what syntax do we want it in. Let's do this example once again with a resolver. So if we wanted to say, hey, 8Base, generate a new resolver, right? 
and we want to see that, okay, we want this going to be in type, we want it to be in TypeScript. So we're going to say the syntax is TS, and the resolver's name is going to be get all users by ID, let's say. So we run that. And cool, it updated our base.yaml file and it generated the GraphQL file, the mock file, as well as the handler. So if we go back to when we reload here, we can see that, hey, this updated our get all users by ID. And inside here, we can see that now we have a TypeScript generated resolver function, right, with a typed response. We also have our schema.graphql file, which we could now change or edit as well as the mock file, which allows us to execute it immediately locally. So if we were to copy this and paste it into our terminal, it invokes that function that we just generated. And what's cool about this too is like, let's say we wanted to run eight base deploy, right? So this will just take a minute, but essentially what it's doing is it's compiling our TypeScript functions as well as our JavaScript functions and deploying them to our workspace. Just as they were generated, they are production ready, meaning that they can run and execute. Naturally, you probably want to change your functions to actually be domain specific. However, we like to think that immediately as when you generate a function, it's ready to be used. So let's look at what happens once we run deploy. So after about a minute, our new project deployed to the workspace that we had set up. We now know that our functions are deployed because we could actually invoke them from the command line. So if we ran our same function, the get all users by ID that we just created, and as well as passed the same mock that we have locally, but called invoke instead of invoke local, we can run that command and see that it invoked and returned the exact same response that we would have expected based on the mock that we're giving it. And if we go over to our workspace and reload it, we can now see that if we go to the logic view, which is right here, we have deployed three custom functions, two resolvers and one webhook. Here we can see a little bit of information about the function that's been deployed based on its type. For example, this is the endpoint to invoke the webhook machine callback that we created. However, if we do go to the logs, we can also see the last time that we invoked this function, as well as how much memory consumed, how long it took, and all that other information. So I hope this was a helpful way to get an understanding of how to use generators from the command line to really quickly generate, deploy, as well as then have the opportunity to jump in and change custom functions and get them working in your eight-based workspace. I'm gonna include some links to the documentation in the description of this video so that you have some more resources to jump deeper into. However, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section of this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.